Hello and welcome back to My Own Worst Enemy. It is time to start 1938 in Triumph and Tragedy. So the year marker is on 1938, as you can see over here. And our phase season marker is on the new year. So the next thing we would do would be to do a victory check, but there's nowhere even, no one even close to that. I've pre-shuffled these decks. We'll give them another quick final shuffle here, just on camera. It's just a... Uh, can't, you can never shuffle too much in games like this. I'm just going to kind of give them a quick shuffle each. I've already shuffled them, like I said, so not that important to go into any great length shuffling these. But I do like a thoroughly shuffled deck because that makes it more random, hopefully more random for us. And we'll just split it there. That's our investment deck. All right, so going to the sequence of play, the next thing is to determine the turn order. So let's roll a D6, and there's one already in there. Let's get that out. I'm gonna roll a D6 and see what the turn order is gonna be for 1938. We roll a one, so that's gonna be over to the axis side. I think that's what we had last turn. So we're gonna put the turn order here and give the current turn marker to the axis. And we do not need to worry about a blockade check here. So the next thing is to determine our production level. We're still at peace, everyone's still at peace. So it's the lowest between population and industry. 14 population for the axis. So 14, I'll get out the D20 that shows a 14. So 14 um, production units for the axis. And so I think for the axis, they are, Still, I mean, their military is is not that bad. They've managed to increase a lot of their units up to strength two. Their resource marker is still at nine. That needs to be increased a little bit more. If they're going to go to war, that needs to be a little bit higher, I think. So they're probably going to spend 1938 again on a big diplomatic push, trying to get some of these resources, like in Bulgaria. I think there was one. Yeah, there's one down here in Turkey. So they may try for those. I think they're gonna focus on, on that uh, diplomacy and maybe some more of these industry cards. So let's go ahead and see what they wanna do here. I think what they're gonna do is just, I think, I think they're gonna get five each of these cards. I think they're gonna get five action cards, five of these investment cards, and then maybe they'll spend four points remaining on uh, units, building new cadres or, up, or even making these more powerful. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's spend 10 of these uh, resource points here. And they're going to get five action cards. One, two, three, four, five. And they'll put that in their hand. And then five of these industry cards. One, two, three, four, five. Now the Axis is lagging behind in research. The West has rocket artillery. And then the Soviets, of course, have motorized infantry and heavy bombers. So they can really move their forces forward quickly up to three. And then, so finally, these last four points, I think they're gonna wanna, let's see, I think they're gonna increase these two units to step, let's see, two. So that's one, two. So now we're down to two more points left to spend. I think they're gonna increase this sub to two. And then I think they're gonna buy a new, fleet or maybe a new seven let's put a new fleet and they're going to put that in denmark so let's just put that in denmark and it enters at a strength of one so that's it for the production points spent for the axis and now we will move along to the soviets now the soviets again they're at peace everyone's at peace so the lowest indicator here is industry at 11. so they're going to get 11 production points and they are the closest of the three powers to declaring war. At least they are the one, the one power that's more able, I would say, to go to war because their lowest, their resources are all the way up here to 13. So that's pretty good for war. If they declare war, they would still be at an industry of 11, but even that's not bad. They could take a lot of actions with that. So that, they're not as focused, I don't think, on preparing for war. They may want some more units. They may want to beef up their units. They're really kind of lax there as far as um, strength goes. And I think they're going to spend six on cards. They're going to buy three action cards and three industry cards. So that would take us down to five. So let's get three action cards. One, two, 
three, and then three investment cards. One, two, three. And with these five remaining points, they're going to spend to build up their existing cadre. So it's going to be one, two, fill this air unit up, three, four, well, not, not the armor. They're going to build up these two infantry units, four, four five. And that is going to be it for their production. And so now we will pass this turn marker over to the west and looking at the west, their resource marker, remember, is way up here because they do have influence in the uh, United States with their four resources. So that's kind of on the edge there. That I still think that might change. So their lowest marker is on a 10 for industry. And they do need to build up their military as well, but they're, they need everything. <laughs> the West just needs help, all kinds of help. All right, so 10. So let's put the 10 on the D20 here to track this. They're going to spend three right off. So that's going to take us down to seven. And they're going to build up, France is going to build up its cadres. So that's three, seven left. They're going to buy. I'm going to say four of these action cards, two, three, four. So now we're down to three. Wow, uh, this is tough for the West. They're going to get, I'm just going to say they're going to get three industry cards, two, three. So three industry cards, that is their production. Now we come back here to the Axis because we're going to now start the government phase. And so let's grab the cards for the Axis. I'm going to take a quick look through here and see what they... And so again, looking at the factory cards first, it's not important, as important here for the Axis to get their industry up anymore. So they've got, they're going to focus, I think, on research this turn it looks like and actually they have this science card so this is uh, beginning in 1938 this card can be paired with any tech listed below to activate or to achieve that tech and i'm looking at their hand and the one that i see that really stands out is this one and this is lst so you can invade two ground units if you invade by sea. So that seems to be pretty powerful to me. And I think they're going to play this. So they're, that's going to give them, that's going to give them LST. So I'm going to put this down. Uh, let's see, where am I going to put this? I'm running out of room here. I'm just going to kind of put it down here near these peace dividends. Or actually, maybe we'll just stick them on this side and start tracking it along this way. And so that's, we'll discard the card that they played to get that. So that is the first play for the Axis. So now we go over to the Soviets. And let's see what they want to do. Let me sh get the factory cards out here first. And so looking at this, they've got yet another technology here that they can play. And it is this they have. Well, let me show you both these together because it looks better with two, right? So there's the air defense or air defense radar. And that says that air forces in friendly territory fire 2A3. So that is pretty powerful. I think they're going to play that. So let's discard one of those, and the other card is now in their hand. So motorized infantry, heavy bombers, and air defense radar. And on top of all that, they have a pretty good, they're, they're ready to go to war, so this might, this might entice the Soviets to take some sort of action. We're going to have to see. So that is it for their hand play. So let's go over now to the west who is still looking very anemic in my opinion. Let me get their factory cards out here. They actually finally have matching cards. They have Sonar, Fleets Fire at S3. So I think they're going to play that. We'll discard one of those and put Sonar in their hand as well as Rocket Artillery. And then we will now come back to the Axis. Get the West cards back over with the West. And now we're back to the Axis. And the Axis, I think they're going to want to hold on to these. They've got three of these factory cards. Uh, they got, yeah, they're going to hold those three tech cards, investment cards. 
and they're going to play this isolationism card, which is going to remove an influence marker from the USA. We're going to do that. So that's going to take this West influence marker out of the US. And what that does is also remove these resources. So there's four. They're at 17. So this drops to 13. And that population, that was a uh, subcapital, so pop two, that's going to go down by two. 14. And now that is out of there. So that is the hard play for the axis. So they've got that influence out of the US. They wanted to do that for sure. Then we go back to the Soviets. So they're going to play this intimidation card. And that is going to allow them to place a friendly influence marker in any neutral nation adjacent to friendly controlled territory. So I think they're going to stick this in Finland. Uh, do they want to do that? It's adjacent. You know what? They're going to stick it in the Baltic states. It's adjacent. And I kind of, the reason I, I said Finland at first, but now I'm thinking they may not want to do that. They may just want to march into Finland and maybe take the Baltic states through diplomacy. Maybe. I don't know. We'll see. So that is it for this action card. And we now go to the West. Their industry. So let's see. It would cost them six, uh, yes, yeah, six to boost their industry. I think they are going to do that. So they're going to spend six points worth of factory cards and increase their industry up to 11. Now we go back to the Axis. The Axis is going to play a Yugoslavia influence card. We go back to the Soviets again. The Soviets are going to play a Latin America card. Back to the West. And the West is going to say, you know what, Soviets? No, 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 you're got, not getting the Baltic states that easy. So they're going to play their Baltic states card. So that's going to take that marker out of the Baltic states for the Soviet Union. So let's do that. We'll discard the Baltic states card there. That's it for the West. Go back now to the Axis. They're going to play a Bulgaria card. We go back to the Soviets now, who are now upset because they lost the Baltic states influence. And the Soviets are going to say no to Latin America with the Germans. So they're going to remove that German Latin America card with that. So that's the Soviets action. Now we go back to the West. And the West is going to say no to Bulgaria for the Axis. So they're going to take away that card for the Axis. That's the West. Now we're going to go back to the Axis. And the Axis is going to play a Low Countries card. And then we're going to go back to the Soviets. And the Soviets are competing now with the Germans openly. And they're going to say, nope, take away that Low Countries card. So we're going to take that. And we will discard that. I don't think the Germans are too happy about the West or the Soviets right now. The West, let's see, they're getting very low on cards now. I think they are going to play a Persia card. And we're going to go back to the Axis. My discard deck is getting junky over here. Let's take care of that. So the Axis. So the Axis is looking to keep the U.S. out of the war. So they're going to play a U.S. influence card. Let's put that marker in. And remember that the Axis cannot actually have the U.S. become a protectorate or even a satellite. They can only make it harder for the, the Western powers to gain the U.S. as a, as a satellite. So that's going to make it even more difficult now for the West to get the U.S. to come in, at least as for now. So that's the Axis term. We go back to the Soviets. So if they can keep the U.S. out of the war, that would be very good for the, well, it'd be good for the Soviets and the Germans as well. The Soviets are going to play this Portugal card, and that is going to, oops, not, not, the, not the Germans, the Soviets are going to play a Portugal card, and that is it. Now we go back to the West. The West is going to pass back to the Germans. The Germans are going to play another U.S. card. Now it's making it even more difficult for the West to get the U.S. as a satellite. So a lot, lot of 
sympathy for Nazi Germany in the United States. That's unfortunate. Go back now to the USSR. And they're going to pass. I think they might be done. Back to the West. Let's see what they can do, if anything. They are going to pass as well. Back to the Axis. And they are going to play a Bulgaria card. We will go back to the Soviets. They're going to pass. West will pass. And we will come back now to the Axis. And they are going to pass. So that's three passes, and that is going to end the at least the card playing phase of this. Now we resolve diplomacy. And I already started, I really shouldn't put out these markers. Uh, I think Yugoslavia was the other one. Really shouldn't go out until all the cards are down. But when I when I go through and pick the cards like I've been doing, not as big of a problem because I can still keep up with it. So we know, for instance, that no one was able to counter the US for the the uh, axis, so those influence cards stay out there. Well, those influence markers stay in the United States. Bulgaria is down here. I didn't put one out for that, so let's go ahead and do that because I don't think anyone was able to counter it. I would have pulled it if so. So that's Bulgaria. And then Yugoslavia, I'd already put one out. Or is this the second one? See, I'm, this is why you got to keep up with Was this the second one or did I already put one out? No, this was put out last turn, so they do get another Yugoslavia marker. And we'll discard that. And then, so when there's two, let's take a look here. So now there's two influence markers in Yugoslavia, which makes them an associate. And I don't think anything's going to change here, except that a military incursion by any faction into that associate territory is a violation of neutrality. And they've already, they already have the uh, resources and any uh, muster values that would have happened with that first influence marker. That's it for the Soviets. And Portugal, this Portugal card is going to remove this influence marker from Portugal that the West had, the poor West. <laughs> and then uh, the West only had a Persia card out. No one, no one countered that Persia card. So the West will get a marker into Persia, which is over here. And that resolves all of the diplomacy. And now we see if all the powers are in hand compliance size. So the Soviets can have six. They only have three. The West is allowed to have eight. They only have three. And then the Germans are allowed to have seven. They currently have four. So there's compliance, all the powers. And again, I've been negligent in moving up my uh, phase season marker. That was the government phase. I always forget to do that. It's just kind of sitting down there out of the way, but that's okay. It doesn't, as long as I keep things going in order, it doesn't matter that much. Because now we're going to go into the spring season. And we will start with the axis since they have the current turn marker. Things are getting interesting. Now the board has changed. So now remember the command phase. This is where we get into actually moving the units and initiating combat if we so choose. And the board has changed again. This is why when you play this game that you may want to go a few rounds through diplomacy to see how things fall out. And it, the way it's fallen out to this point, that we've reached this point, the, the uh, Germans have actually managed to really make it hard for the West to get the United States to come in on their side as a satellite. That's huge. So that makes it more likely that they might want to consider actually going on an, going on the offense here and invading a country because I don't, it's going to put the, the West in a tight spot. The same thing with the Soviets. They, they're also looking at what's going on here with the United States. And now they're thinking, well, there's not, you know, with the West being, in my opinion, really weak right now, and the Soviets being really strong and Germany being really strong, that now might be the time to take action. So that is just something to consider. So this summer or the spring phase here, the, the uh, axis is going to pass. We're going to go to the Soviets and they're going to have to pass because I, I hate to say it, but they have no <laughs> command cards in their hand. So now let's go over to the West and they are also going to pass. So that's going to be three passes and that's going to end the spring phase. Now we're going to go into the summer phase. We're back down to the axis in the summer now. 
The Axis does have a summer command card here. They're really tempting, like I said, now that the West is really pushed back on the ropes uh, di diplomatic wise, it's tempting to go on the offensive here as, as the, the Axis, but I think they're gonna pass. I think they want one more round of diplomacy because they're doing really good at, at diplomacy. They're getting all of these resources without having to attack anything. So they're gonna pass. Uh, the Soviets have to pass, and then back to the west, and they're going to pass as well. So that's going to move our marker now to the blockade, but we have no blockade, so now we're in the fall. Back to the, the Axis. Axis is going to pass. Soviets have to pass. The west is going to pass, so now we're going to go into the winter phase. And of course, the Soviets have no command card, so they can't do anything here. So that's going to simply take us right back into a new year. It is now 1939, and that's where we'll start when we come back. Now, I've got a feeling, I've got a strange feeling that in 1939, war is going to break out. It's not a guarantee, but it, it's looking likely. The board has changed dramatically. The only thing at this point that the West can do is try to get those Nazis out of uh, the U.S. over there, get that influence back. They're going to need the U.S. if things heat up. They're going to need the U.S. as a satellite for sure. And now that things are looking the way they look, it's really tempting for the Axis to go on the offensive this in 39. And the question is, which way would they go first? They might go historically and just go and try to get into Poland here without regards to the Soviet Union. Um, they're not, I mean, the way that diplomacy has been going, and like I said, narratively speaking, role-playing this out, uh, relations between Germany and the USSR are not good right now because they are, they're fighting over these, these states and kicking each other out uh, you know, through diplomacy. So I, I imagine the tensions are high between Germany and the Soviets as well. So I, we're gonna have to figure out what is going to happen and if the Soviets, looking at the Soviets, they're not making the diplomatic push into Finland and Sweden they wanted to. They might consider invading Finland, Sweden, maybe going into Norway. They also might want to invade Poland. They may want to come down here and maybe by force kick the Germans out, keep them away from Turkey. I don't know. We're going to find out when we come back. Well, hold on a second here. <laughs> so there, is, there is one thing I forgot to do at the beginning of this. It's not critical. I didn't hand out the peace dividend, so let's do that real quick. It's not going to make a difference. But let's do it. So let's do the axis first. They draw another zero, three zeros for the axis. The Soviets, I can't believe I forgot this. I got to pay more attention to the, the uh, sequence of play. So the Soviets drew a zero. And then the West also drew a zero, so that's three zeros. All right, can't believe I forgot that, but good thing I remembered it here at the end. So, and the reason I remembered it is just thinking victory-wise. Anyway, as I was saying, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you haven't, and thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next time. And they are the closest of the three powers to declaring war. At least they are the one, the one power that's more able, I would say, to go to war because their lowest, their resources are all the way up here to 13. So that's pretty good.